Melissa Chi, starting with uh, my first question to you. Um, I've, I've, I've read and I've heard you talk about it before. Uh, you have described the Hindu genocide as the biggest and longest genocide on earth. Uh, only now are people beginning to understand this horrific reality. But the details for a lot of us are really sketchy. Um, could you please explain what exactly the genocide of Hindus refers to and what makes it the biggest and longest in human history? Absolutely. And it's a very important question. Um, so Hindu civilization, it's the, it's the oldest surviving civilization on earth and there's evidence for its existence you know spanning tens of thousands of years and you know right across the globe mm -hmm. um of course there were other ancient civilizations as well the mayans the aztecs the ancient egyptians the persians but they were all wiped out mm -hmm. only hindus survived the only ancient civilization that survives and it's important to celebrate that survival because of course it means that at least some knowledge still remains today and the practices, many of the practices are still alive today, but that survival hides a very ugly truth. Mm -hmm. And that is that the same forces that destroyed the Mayans, the Persians, the ancient Egyptians, they also wreaked terrible damage on Bharat and on the, the Hindu civilization. So yes, Hindus survived, but it came at a very high cost. And there are of course many sort of popular narratives out there to try and almost excuse the Hindu genocide or even to deny it. And you may have been taught some of this in school mm -hmm. and it's what's reflected in Bollywood and other places. And it's important to realize that these narratives, they were created with a, an agenda. Mm -hmm. They're not objective. Now, there has been some very good research done to understand the extent of the Hindu genocide by, sadly, a relatively small number, but very dedicated individuals and people like Kernreld Elstji, uh, Francois Gauthierji, mm -hmm. Stephen Knapp, um, an organization called Ishitva Dharma, Sanstapan Foundation, very recently. Um, they have been collating all of the evidence of different epochs of genocide throughout the last 1000 years of, of Hindus and trying to come up with like a total figure. And the consensus is it's certainly in the hundreds of millions and that's a conservative estimate. Mm -hmm. And of course, on top of that, you have hundreds of millions more Hindus who have been raped, mm -hmm. who have been forced to flee, who have been tortured who have been forced to convert to Abrahamic um, religions. And all this began with the Islamic invaders, roughly the, you know, the 11th century is when they were really giving it some. Um, and their main mode of uh, destruction, it was uh, and, and of genocide, was physical destruction. It was killing, it was raping, it was destroying temples it was burning down libraries. So a lot of destruction actually you can see today still in Parat with your own eyes. Mm -hmm. And when people are researching these er eras of Hindu history, you only have to look at the records of the perpetrators to get the figures to understand the extent of all of this genocide and destruction. So many of the Islamic invaders, their own secretaries, Muslim chroniclers, they themselves are the sources of these numbers. So for example, the Islamic um, conqueror Timur mm -hmm. boasts in the records of killing 100,000 Hindus in a single day. Or the Bahamani sultans who make the record that they have a target of killing 100,000 Hindus a year, spanning a roughly 200 year period. And there are so many of these examples, the, the Hindu Kush mountains, which span um, Afghanistan and Pakistan, they're called Hindu Kush because Kush means slaughter. It's the, the mountains of the Hindu slaughter. And there are descriptions 
of there being such a rapid extermination of Hindus there that literally Hindu blood would flow down the mountains. So the extent of the genocide in these periods caused by these Islamic invaders, it's completely undeniable and it's very, very massive. But it's important to realize that Hindus, you know, they fought back really valiantly. And in that way, actually, Bharat is quite unique because of all the countries that Islam tried to establish as a caliphate, you know, to create an Islamic state, it didn't succeed in Bharat because the Hindus were so brave and there are so many ex inspirational Hindus that we can you know, be, as, as we grow up, to inspire us to become brave Hindus as well. Um, and it, even in, you know, in the 1600s, the Hindus, they fought back, and also the Sikhs, you know, they fought back so strongly mm -hmm. that actually the, the threat from the Islamists was really quite quelled you know, under the people such as Chhatrapati Shivaji, Mm -hmm. and such. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately, that period was relatively short, because it really wasn't long until the next set of invaders came in, mm -hmm. the European colonizers. And yes, they again had a, an Abrahamic agenda, but their agenda was also economic. Mm -hmm. And the evidence shows that at least tens of millions of Hindus were killed by the British through the Portuguese Inquisition, the British labor camps, the different famines that were caused by Churchill, firing on peaceful protesting women and children, and then massacres by the, um, the Muslim League under the British watch. So the Nawakli massacre, the Mopla massacre, direct action day. So certainly you know, a lot of blood, Hindu blood was spilled by the British. But it's important to realize that genocide isn't necessarily just about physical killing because the Miriam Webster dictionary definition of genocide is it's the destruction and systematic, the deliberate and systematic destruction of a racial, political, or cultural group. So it's not just about killing. You can destroy a cultural group in other ways. For example, cultural genocide. And this is where the European colonizers were very cunning and actually very effective in enacting genocide, not necessarily just through killing. So things like not just destroying temples, but you know, taking control of temples and siphoning off their wealth, mm -hmm. um, completely de-warriorizing or removing the Kshatriya tradition from Hindus by outlawing martial arts such as Kalari Payatu, mm -hmm. um, replacing the really effective and holistic Bharati uh, education system mm -hmm. with a very biased anti-Hindu British education system mm -hmm. and also misinterpreting and deliberately mistranslating the Hindu Shastras to inject lies mm -hmm. into the very literature of Hindu faith. Mm -hmm. So they were very effective at this cultural genocide as well as physical killings. And of course, this genocide, it's continuing. We're 72 years into India's independence now, mm -hmm. but we still see this genocide carrying on. So since becoming independent, obviously the Hindus trapped in the neighboring countries, the Islamic state countries, mm -hmm. um, you know, Pakistan, Bangladesh, they have really faced some terrible, terrible existence, very harrowing accounts in, in Bangladesh. 22% of the population were Hindus in 1951, mm -hmm. but today that figures more like 8%. Mm -hmm. In just the 1971 Bangladesh genocide that was committed by Pakistan, we know the figure of 3 million were killed. But what people don't realize is that nearly 85% of those 3 million killed were Hindus. 
-hmm. even though actually Hindus only accounted for 19% of the population in Bangladesh at that time. Mm -hmm. And of course, genocide of Hindus is continuing in India as well. Take the 202 Khodra massacre of 59 Karsevaks in Gujarat, burned to death by a mob of one to 2,000 um, Islamists. Mm -hmm. And it continues to this day. So hardly a day goes by where you don't hear about a village in Bangladesh a hin of, of, of Hindus being burnt down mm -hmm. or of a young Hindu girl in Pakistan being abducted and forced to marry a man you know, three times her age of a different religion or a Hindu in India being shot and stabbed, you know, all for being Hindus. And just my last point is to emphasize that it's not just the Abrahamic faiths that are you know, causing this genocide. You know, I've been focusing on the Islamists and the British Raj with their you know, Christian conversion agendas as well. But it's people of other ideologies, such as communists nowadays. And that's how the Hindu genocide is quite different from genocides of other communities, such as the Jews in Rwanda, in Armenia, because they're the perpetrator was generally at more of a singular group. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, when we have the Hindu genocide, there's a collaboration of many different disparate groups, each wanting their final goal of global domination, but collaborating mm -hmm. um, to pick off what they see as the easiest target, which are Hindus. And, you know, if you can bring 100 billion Hindus um, and convert them to support your ideology or your religion, just imagine how they each become so much more powerful. Mm -hmm. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanavad. Namaskar.